Carol Shelby. Racer, businessman, promoter, scoundrel, well, larger than life, and a South Bay legend. PCC TV. Today's episode, Shelby in the South Bay. South Bay, huh? Nah. Born in Texas, a pilot during the Second World War, he went on to become a poultry farmer and went bankrupt. Well, career change, he then went into motorsports. First driving an MGTC, Shelby won the MG and the production car classes at a race in Texas and went on from there, moving up to different cars and different classes. He won races from California to England to France, winning Le Mans, and was Sports Illustrated Magazine's Driver of the Year in both 1956 and 1957. He retired from racing in 1960 and, along with Peter Brock, opened the Shelby School of High Performance Driving at the Riverside Track in Southern California. Now, the Riverside Raceway is long gone. And, well, yes, Riverside is in Southern California, which is getting closer to the South Bay, but we're still not quite there yet. He continued to migrate west. Now, before he started converting cars up in Venice, Shelby started with tires in 1961. He became a Goodyear tire distributor and set up his shop in La Mirada, which is still heading west. The very next year, in 1962, Shelby created Shelby American and moved into the South Bay adjacent in his famous shop in Venice. This is the one we first saw on Ford versus Ferrari as Matt Damon drives to his shop. Note the Dewey Weber sign. Dewey was a famous South Bay surfer. His statue lies in Hermosa and opened up his first surf shop in Venice. Oh, by the way, um, for a history of all the South Bay board shapers and surfers, take a gander at this video. Meanwhile, back to Shelby. Here's another cool shot from the movie Ford vs. Ferrari showing the inside of the Venice shop, as I couldn't actually find any original images of the interior. Now, the red brick shop at 1042 Princeton Drive became the birthplace for Shelby's fledgling car company, Shelby American Incorporated, and it was here that the first Cobra sports car was born. The Cobra was based on an AC Ace, and Shelby replaced the six-cylinder engines with Ford V8s. Now, this structure used to be in Venice, but it's now part of Marina del Rey, and it also doesn't modify cars anymore. It's now a recording studio. However, all the early photos of the Cobra were in and around this building. Meanwhile, Shelby was running his race program using the Cobras and winning. Now, also during this time, Shelby got involved with another English car company, Sunbeam, and performed similar engine swaps as he did with AC Ace and developed the first prototypes of what was initially called the Thunderbolt, but what would later become the Sunbeam Tiger. Now, these cars were all converted in England, but Shelby received a royalty on each one. By the way, James Bond drove a Sunbeam Alpine, the four-cylinder model, in the movie Dr. No. And if you're fond of James Bond, and who isn't? and what he drinks and what he shoots. Well, feel free to watch my James Bond videos. Meanwhile, back to Venice. Shelby was not only competing on behalf of Ford, he was asked to start modifying Ford production models for sale to the public. The Mustang was a huge hit when it was launched in 1964, and Ford management tasked Shelby with creating a performance version. As demand for his Ford Mustang variant ramped up, he moved to a larger facility at what is now LAX. 
This location was also replicated in the movie Ford vs. Ferrari. Now, allegedly, the steel tracks used to move the cars during the assembly are still partially visible today, but I couldn't find any interior photos of the facility. So, LAX, which is getting closer to the South Bay? Am I sure about this South Bay thing? Patience, Grasshopper. Well, Shelby moved out of the LAX location in the late 60s, but the facility is still in existence and is now the location of Qantas Freight Cargo Terminal, located at 6555 West Imperial Highway, Los Angeles, California, 90045. Now here is where we start to chat about the South Bay. After he lost the lease at LAX, Ford encouraged Shelby to move production of the Mustangs from California to Michigan, frankly to simplify the logistics. So Shelby made some changes, big changes. In November of 1967, Shelby Americans operations were split into three separate companies, Shelby Automotive, Shelby Racing Company, and the Shelby Parts Company. As mentioned earlier, Shelby Automotive, the Mustang production arm, was set up in Michigan. And in November of 1967, the Shelby Racing Company moved from the hangar LAX to a new office in Torrance, California. The Shelby Parts Company also moved to Torrance, although it would later move to the Detroit area. Now to the question, where exactly in Torrance? There are many vague references to Shelby being based in, and I quote, near the Torrance Municipal Airport. But the only reference I could find in this era puts his shop at 4320 West 190th Street. This is not exactly near the airport. So maybe the article was written by someone who didn't know Torrance? I don't know. And did both of the spun-off companies located in the same building? I don't know that either. But what I can tell you is that the location is now a storage facility. But wait, there's more. More South Bay locations. Now, remember the Goodyear Tire Distributor? Well, in 1971, Shelby established the Shelby Wheel Company in the facility that was previously the location of his Goodyear distributor. Now, this facility somehow migrated from La Mirada down to Gardena sometime between 1961 and 1971. The 19021 South Figueroa Street location is still used by the Shelby Company today, and it's just down the street from the old 190th Street location. The location went on to manufacture a line of eight-spoke alloy wheels for the Saab Automotive Company in the early to mid-80s. They were available in gold, silver, and black. These wheels were available through Saab dealers and could be fitted to the Saab 99 and the Saab 900 models, manufactured through 1987. Now, the location used to be open to the public and feature cars and coffees. But the Carroll Shelby Enterprises Southern California facility in Gardena seems to be a storage area now. Definitely not open to the public. And oh, by the way, in a fun sort of connectivity way, the location which was once Shelby's Goodyear Tire Distributor location is actually just across the way from the Goodyear Blimp location in LA. But let's get back to the late 1960s. There was a heck of a lot going on the last few years of the 60s with Shelby. There were some amazing highs, such as taking the Trans Am title and winning Le Mans. But things started to spiral downward in 1968 and just kept getting worse. Needless to say, Shelby was on the prowl for more business in this era to turn the ship around. 
So in a real <laughs> move, he sort of swooped in and pushed his old designer, Peter Brock, out of the way when he caught wind of another car company looking to start competing in racing. This other car company, by the way, had just constructed a headquarters building in Torrance, located between the two South Bay locations of the Shelby facilities. This was the U.S. distributor for Toyota. Now, Toyota was in the process of launching their first sports car in the U.S., the 2000 GT. The car itself had been raced and tested successfully in Japan, but the U.S. distributor wanted to demonstrate the car in the U.S. The Shelby American Magazine recounts the story of how Shelby stole the business from Brock when he went to Toyota and claimed that Brock was only his tire man. Well, Toyota awarded Shelby the business. Now, oh, by the way, it's super fuzzy in this image, but the address indicated here is the 190th Street address that we visited earlier. In an equally shameful action, Toyota hired Shelby and didn't even have the intestinal fortitude to inform Peter Brock. The people weep as their glory departs. Well, in 1967, Shelby completed the three cars he was sent into race trim. The first one was used as a test mule and a backup car, and the other two cars were raced. They finished the season third and fourth. Toyota, allegedly embarrassed by the results, canceled the contract. They lost face and would not race again in the U.S. for a decade. In a twist of irony, Peter Brock went to the other Japanese manufacturer in Torrance, who was also located between Toyota and the Shelby Gardena facility, Datsun. And unlike the Shelby-Toyota relationship, which lasted just one year, the Brock-Datsun relationship lasted and prospered. And now for something completely different. Now, the Toyota 2000 GT sort of faded from memory. But when I ran the event activation at the Laguna Seca Historic Races, I had a family reunion of the 2000 GTs, including the Shelby cars. And I got to drive one on the circuit. Good times indeed. But wait! There's more! And one final James Bond connection. The 2000 GT was featured in You Only Live Twice. And don't forget to check out my Bond videos. Meanwhile, back to Shelby. Carol Shelby founded the Shelby American Management Company, and in the 80s, he was connected with his old friend Lee Iacocca, who was now running Chrysler. The collaboration began anew with the 1983 Dodge Shelby Charger, designed and engineered at the Chrysler Shelby Performance Center in California. The actual cars were built on the factory charger assembly lines. In 1986, Shelby brought limited production models in-house to Shelby Automobiles in Whittier, California. And here Shelby launched the GLHS series, first with the Omni and then the Charger in 1987. Uh, but back to the South Bay. Design of a new car began at the Shelby shop in Gardena when a new assembly plant was simultaneously being built near the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. This new car would be called the Series 1. Now, the man also started a whole bunch of other companies and licensed everything to his name uh, from products even outside the automotive segment. Everything from motorcycles to chilies to boats to men's grooming products. And so ends the South Bay tour of Shelby. Only the Gardena facility remains. Or does it? We have one final Shelby South Bay connection to talk about. Enter Mike McCluskey. Since the late 1980 and onwards, various companies have built what are known in the hobby as continuation cars. Now, Shelby authorized continuations of the original AC built Cobra series and the Daytona Coupe, or Coupe and he turned to McCluskey to do it. Now Mike literally has his shop at the end of the Torrance Municipal Airport runway. 
Was this the location that the reports in the 1960s referred to? I don't know because the building looks too new. And full disclosure, I went to the location, but unlike Trevor from Speed Hunters, I didn't have the gumption to knock on the door and ask for a tour. In any case, Mike worked for Shelby for more than 20 years, and he was the one that made the initial CSX 4000 series cars that were completed from chassis that were built by Mike McCluskey with NOS and reconditioned parts. And so there you go. Cobras and Daytonas made right here in Torrance and at the end of the runway. Maybe those early reports were a prophecy. Hmm. And finally, if you're in Southern California and you're a Shelby fan, you have to head south to visit the Seegerstrom Museum. The collection of Shelby products is amazing. They are in better than new condition and features a selection and variety of every Shelby made. Impressive and well worth a visit. Carol Shelby was quite the character. He has passed, but his companies live on. As mentioned, they're now headquartered in Las Vegas and they have a museum co-located there. I haven't made it out to the Vegas Museum, but next time I'm there, I'll be sure to stop by. And next time you see a Cobra, or a Shelby Cobra Mustang, or a Sunbeam Tiger. Think back in the man whose home base for a time was in the South Bay. If you've been watching this far, I thank you. Bye.